will has to be extreme in its sound and it's the feeling you often have heard so much about when people talk about black metal. It's something you feel and kind of a way of life more than an image. Traditionally it is just a name for uh, like metal with satanic lyrics but that's totally out of date. It's, it's, it's not only about the music, it's also about uh, a lifestyle uh, that is uh, in, uh, going hand in hand with the, with the music. So if black metal is evil, okay. Then we play in an evil Christian black metal band. By the old definition of black metal, you could have a, a black metal that sounded like country, <laughs> if it was satanic. It is uh, extreme music. It is uh, music with passion. It's uh, music with uh, feelings. It's, uh, for me, it's a music with a message, with a strong message. It was uh, um, some guys from England called Venom in the early 80s that they were very much into uh, horror movies and uh, heavy metal music. They they liked uh, Black Sabbath very much, but they they wanted to to make uh, albums with um, satanic imagery on on the covers and uh, uh, and all these lyrics about Satan and waging war in the name of Satan and all this. And then the second album uh, was called Black Metal, so that's where this term comes from. Then, um, during the early 90s, it de developed into a, a musical style of its own, its own in, mostly in Norway and Sweden. It was um, a band called Mayhem, uh, and the leader of Mayhem called himself Geronimus, uh, and he was quite a strong character with a lot of ideas, quite extreme ideas, and uh, he was good at uh, selling himself. And he had a, a record story in Oslo uh, called Helvete, uh, uh, and they also had some kind of room where, where these uh, black metal musicians met and talked about how real black metal should be. When uh, Nuclear Blast decided to release Mortification, which was uh, one of the first Christian death metal bands, there was a lot of boycotts going on. And then, of course, Nuclear Blast doesn't want anyone to decide what they should release, so then they released Horde. I started the Horde project because I wanted to shine some light into the darkness. I wanted to offer the black metal community um, an alternative, a different way of looking at the world, all the darkness and the evil um, music that was coming out of Scandinavia in the early 1990s. I wanted to offer an alternative to that, a light version of that. Back in the early 1990s, looking all the way from Australia here over to Scandinavia and Norway and, and those countries, all I saw was black darkness um, in terms of the black metal culture. It was just so heavy and so evil and so oppressive and just so negative. The first Christian black metal that I, <laughs> I got hold of was Horde and Antestor. And I think uh, it was very much thanks to those two bands that the scene really developed. The response from the, community, the black metal community when Heligas Vat was released was quite negative. Um, the black metal community certainly were, were pretty upset about it, pretty angry about it. Uh, there were some death threats and uh, some people were quite upset about it. 
the Christian people were quite excited about it. They uh, had the opportunity to listen to something new and something different and something they hadn't been exposed to before. It was never really intended for that purpose. It was more to shine some light into the darkness, as I said earlier, and to get a positive message out into the black metal community. It's really up to uh, anyone to call our style whatever they like. But on the other, other hand, you can't, uh, you can't deny the fact that our style sounds like black metal. Wholly un-black metal. It's not black metal. It sounds like black metal. It has all the musical attributes of black metal, the shrill buzzsaw guitars, the extreme shrill screamy vocals, the minimalist production, the blast beats, all of that stuff. But it has lyrics about God instead of lyrics about Satan and lyrics about darkness. So it can never ever be classified as black metal because black metal is satanic metal. Black metal is about Satan. It's about that dark, evil, grim, horrible feeling. Um, but unblack metal is, of course, uh, the opposite to that, uh, which is lyrics about God, even though it sounds the same. And I think the reason why, for example, Christian black metal musicians use the term black metal is that they, they say that this is the type of music we are playing uh, and the music in itself isn't satanic. No, no music is ideological or religious in itself. You can use it for, for a lot of different messages. They, they, instead they just called it black metal because that's the style they were playing in. And then, of course, it's, they put the term Christian black metal to it. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> define it out, out of um, this satanic dungeon. <laughs> we tried to, uh, to, to, take, uh, to take the music into a new uh, dimension of brutality. Uh, we still wanted to find our own way to, uh, to play brutal black metal. A lot of bands are, are focused on the, uh, the sacrifice of Christ, uh, the death and the resurrection. Very strong themes. Uh, blood. <laughs> Atonement. It could be a message about the important matters of life. Oh, life and death. It could be a message of oh, what's uh, inside you, what really matters. It could be about love, and it's about hate. People have a hard time uh, to understand <laughs> a Christian, for example, death metal or black metal. They either haven't listened to black or death metal and understood the feeling, <laughs> or they haven't read the Bible, because it is it's very, very black metal. Satanists who, who uh, or secular people, whatever, who, who uh, cannot understand the connection between the, the biblical <laughs> or the Christian messages and really grim <laughs> metal music, they have probably, uh, well, another view of Christianity <laughs> than I have. <laughs> or, and Christian people who, who can't understand, they, they, they just don't understand. The forces of darkness can use this music because they they claim to be satanists and uh, and then you can you can feel sort of that this band this music is is uh, trying to spread some kind of uh, emptiness and stuff like that.
and uh, you can also feel. I mean, I mean, there is a bunch of bands that I'm uh, listening to uh, that uh, have quite uh, uh, self-destructive uh, lyrics or destructive lyrics, and, th and then I used to feel this kind of emptiness and stuff. But again, when when there is band that that are genuine in their in their hate, so to speak, and that are mo more into this uh, style that you would call uh, devil worshippers or true satanists or whatever, then you can feel it more, uh, maybe more powerful. Uh, it's it's like it could be like a wall uh, between. Uh, me and the music, uh, I feel that the music is there, but it's also a battle going on because I serve the Most High Trinity and um, the forces behind their music uh, is the forces of Satan. world, here you can choose what you want to believe in, and uh, as long as your heart is in it, I think you should, uh, yeah, you should, you should think about what really matters, and everyone who can stand up for their own uh, opinions is worthy of respect. I have more respect for a uh band that claim to be Satanists and stands for that and uh, really uh, really are than um, bands that are uh, writing lyrics about other things that I that I don't that they don't stand for they were, these Norwegian guys were talking about what true black metal should be and of course they talked a lot about being truly satanic and, and uh, um, not only playing music but to, to act out what they were believing in and that, so they were talking about burning churches and talking about uh, killing Christians but nobody one did anything for for some time but then suddenly it's, it, things started happening and I'm, I'm not totally sure, but a lot of things point to, to this very weakness that it was he that started doing things and not just talking about them. I think uh, a lot of the anti-Christian bands have some kind of misunderstanding about Christianity. Maybe they have been treated badly or they have this picture of what Christianity is. And uh, I think that some of the band members some of the anti-Christian bands believe in what they sing about. They they wanted to to uh, do a revenge on what uh, some Christians uh, did uh, one thousand years ago, um, and um, I I think it's such a shame, to be honest, that this things had to happen. You can, you can say a lot of bad things about Christianity and especially for a Christian today we cannot stand for the way Christianity came to the country. It doesn't, it doesn't support the Christian uh, if, you, if you use the Bible to support it you, you're not going to find any support in it. So I can, I can definitely see it's a uh, yeah, people were upset <laughs> back then, and yeah, now it's it was a bad thing for sure. The worst is not the religious point of view, because the church, well, the house is just a house. The church, by the biblical definition, is uh, 
the family of God, the people. So, and they didn't burn the people. So, I think I'm more upset about it just because they, they are old and extremely beautiful. Well, they, they burnt down a, a, a church in uh, Jönköping that was uh, also wooden, very old, in 13th century or something like that. And, and my verdict was that they shouldn't be let out of prison until the church is rebuilt again, exactly as it was with the same wood. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's too harsh. Revenge is keep on conceiving revenge, and hatred is keep on conceiving hatred. Vengeance is, is not, it's, it's a temporary way to solve situation maybe, but it's not an everlasting way to do it. If you are uh, into black metal and, and you are claiming that you hate Christianity and are against everything that Christianity stands for, then of course you have to just say that you hate Christian black metal. I mean, those people have never uh, met us, and they want to uh, to kill us, and they want to to beat us up, and they, yeah, all those kind of threats. And uh, I think it's really ridiculous. We were scheduled to play at the Gates of Metal. Uh, like two days after it was, the news was released on their webpage, they had um, a thread in the guest book called Religious Lunatics. And, and half of the people was like very pissed <laughs> that we were allowed to play and the other half was very pissed at those who were pissed. Yeah, shut up, go take a beer instead if you don't like the bands, fucking faggots. They were very, you know, it was other <laughs> not Christians <laughs> that were like, come on, let it go. It's just a good break for beer. <laughs> if you don't like the band, it's like commercial in telly. <laughs> so, uh, and, and it was a lot of angry people and a lot of people angry at the angry people. And uh, after we played, it was just po a positive response. So. It was, <laughs> it was very nice <laughs> that everybody changed their opinion after we played <laughs> instead of the other way. It, it would be pretty boring if everyone, oh, I'm so excited, <laughs> and then we just sucked. <laughs> it would be <laughs> that would not be so nice. Crimson Moonlight had a show somewhere in Europe, and there was this dude in the audience that didn't like them because they were Christians. And Pilgrim, he has this uh, bowl of incense. He has a lot of uh, sacra sacramental <laughs> stuff in the show. And, and uh, when he had put it down, was somewhere else on stage, this dude jumped up and started to jump on his incense. And of course, uh, you know, Pilgrim is a, is a very nice guy. He, he's the kind that turns the, the other sheik over and over again. But don't jump on his holy things. Do not do that. So he, 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 he pushed him back into the audience and, and of course he got more angry and then he wanted to get up on stage and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> and then, uh, then the sword came in handy. He always has those swords and stuff on stage. So he, he used his sword for the rest of the concert to just keep him on distance. They are threatening us because they they are feeling threatened uh, or scared uh, of uh, what we are doing. 
I can't see any other uh, ground for uh, these actions because if they were not scared or threatened about uh, Christian black metal, then they wouldn't care. Then they just would uh, let it pass away. Why is it so important to, uh, to be black metal or to be on black or not to be this and that? Why don't, why don't you just let us play your music? If you listen to the music and don't read the lyrics, you would probably call it black metal, even if you were into satanic black metal. Jesus was a re rebel against the system. He was uh, crucified for his opinion and uh, it, for yeah, maybe it's a it's a contradiction for some people, but for us it's the most natural thing in the world to play brutal music and with a brutal message. Uh, some some Christians, of course, are very skeptical. But mostly, and I say mostly nowadays, people are, are getting used to it, so to speak. One of the most vehement enemies or aggressive enemies of the Christian, Christian rock <laughs> of any form uh, is a guy in the US called Terry Watkins. And he, he writes a lot of stuff on the net about how evil uh, rock music is. Uh, Christian rock music is of course just as evil as any rock music because rock music is evil in itself. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. An 80 or 70 years old woman are claiming our music to be the devil's music or something like that. Maybe th th that's, that's not happening actually very often. But if they should do it, or if they should call it maybe uh, terrible music or um, dark music or whatever, I could understand it and I, and I had no problem at all with that. And the, the scary thing is when people in my own age or 10 years older than me make uh, such a claims and uh, are serious about it. Uh, we have this uh, Cornerstone Festival, like 45,000 people listening to uh, a bunch of Christian bands. Moonlight has been there to play. Uh, it's everything from rock to really, really <laughs> hard <laughs> black metal. Uh, and, and there are like groups of Christian around, uh, Christians around the area with <laughs> protesting and uh, of course nobody cares about that but they, <laughs> they are free to protest as much as they want to <laughs> of course. But there's, yeah, there are still those that cannot accept it but on the other side uh, they shouldn't have to. <laughs> My thoughts about Christian black metal, I think it's um one of the most natural uh, musical styles and genres for Christians to get into because it's so closely related to um, images and ways of thinking about religion uh, as the early evangelicals did. But I think it's, it's, um, it's not a big step for a young Christian to, to um, get into black metal. And also it's... Um, to play really, really good black metal, you have to be a good mus musician. And, and among the, the evangelical churches, there are a lot of really good musicians. 
so as soon as they have um, stopped having second thoughts about what they are doing and, and really getting into to playing this extreme music, then, then they are usually playing very good, high quality black metal. And I personally think that um, a band like Crimson Moonlight really is the best Swedish black metal band we have. Um, I don't think the other, the, these Ma Madok and Dog Funeral and these established bands that are playing uh, and making as good music as Crimson Moonlight has done on the last two albums. The black metal got real big in the uh, mid-90s also because there was a lot of wannabes joining the scene. Uh, a lot of people who was just drawn to this uh, this uh, mystic black thingy that old ladies were scared of and uh, priests were scared of and having their little rebellion but uh, all in all when it comes to serious black metal I I think it's uh, it's actually just a bunch of really dedicated musicians who really like this extreme uh, expression. One of the head reasons that I uh, continue doing this is because it's a paradox. And that I want to say in combination of what I say, said about the essence of true Christendom. It's a paradox indeed. It's a paradox that God became human. And sometimes a paradox could help you to get a deeper and wider and broader perspective. I mean, it's describing the same struggle of humanity to find the how does the word work? Why are we here? Uh, what, what is good and what is evil? And how should we behave against each other? This is what religion is about, the struggling about these things and finding a way. And you can't find this without um, using both the dark and the light forces. So, so they're all connected in all religions. You have all these different imageries. And, and uh, so black metal is about the same thing as... Christianity or Judaism or Islam. It's about finding your way in, in this world. And, and uh, if, you, if you're not an atheist, you have to somehow relate to, to the higher forces. And that's what black metalists do, and that's what Christians are doing. So it's, it's very it's, um, different, different expressions of the same, same uh, struggle in humanity. A lot of the scene is thinking more about the lyrics and then the music they like and they don't like the black man to be Christian. Black metal is a tool which you can use to spread good or evil. We had a lot of, of churches burning down in Norway and uh, well <laughs> their argument is well you Christian priests you came a thousand years ago when you burned down our temples and now we're gonna burn you back. So, well, it seems like the struggle is still, we still struggle for the same hill, <laughs> thousand years later.